Hello students, now we will read the stanza 3. In stanza 3, the poet is actually giving you a description of Makabiti, his physical demeanor. What kind of, um, what are his physical descriptions, you know. Makabiti's ginger cat, he is very tall and thin. You would know him if you saw him, for his eyes are sunken in. His brow is deeply lined with thought. His head is eye highly doomed. His coat is dusty from neglect. His whiskers are uncombed. He sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake. And when you think he is half asleep, he is always wide awake. So, student, in this stanza, the poet is describing you the structure, the body structure, the physique, the demeanor of um, the Makabiti, the mystery cat. So the first makeability is a ginger cat. It means to say that his body color is brown and orange. You know, when you say someone that you are a ginger person, it means you are, you know, um, regarding, you are denoting his skin color. His skin color is brown or orange. And because of this skin color, some people are discriminated also. So actually, uh, as you can see in the picture also, he is not a very, uh, you know, a, 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 a lovable cat. His skin is brown and slightly reddish and brown, orange brown color. So this type of color is referred by the word ginger. As you can know that the color of ginger, what is the color of ginger? So, you know, someone's... You know, resembling the color of ginger, you can refer him as the ginger. So, makeup it is a ginger cat. His body color was slightly like a ginger. And, you know, or orange brown, having an orange or brown color. That's what it means, the word ginger. And he is very tall and thin also at the same time. He is tall, you know, in the, to the context of, of a length of that, um, to the general length, to the average length of a cat. He is tall according to that, not um, you know in the context of human beings. His height is, you can um, you know see in the context of cat. Then you can feel that his high, he is slightly taller and he is thin, very lean and thin. And you can easily recognize him when you see him. You know, you, when whenever you saw him, you can easily recognize him. Um, for what? For his eyes, as his eyes are actually sunken in. You can easily recognize him because his eyes are sunken in. You know, it means to say that, you know, his eyes are actually in, in into the bottom. You know. You can easily recognize him, you know, whenever you see him because of his eyes. As you know, for humans, you know, every cat looks same. For humans, every dog looks same. But you can recognize that this cat is different from other cats because his eyes are sunken in. His So you can easily recognize him. His brow is deeply lined with thought. It means to say that a student where some a person who thinks a lot, you know, there are always lining on, on his forehead because of the thinking, because, you know, um, the lines are formed on our forehead um, with excessive thought. You know, when we think a lot, when we do a lot of thinking, when we do a lot of mental work, then a line is actually formed, you know, on our forehead. So actually his brow is deeply lined. It means that brow, you know, the eyebrows, but you know, um, just beside the brow, uh, there are many lines on the makeup uh, forehead. So his brow is deeply lined with thought. It means to say that he thinks a lot. He uses his brain a lot. And that's what you can understand about him. Uh, in the By reading the first two stanza, you get to know that, that he is a very clever cat. So he thinks a lot. He uses his brain a lot. That is why, you know, he, he has so many lines on his forehead, actually. Uh, a person who does a lot of thinking, they form lines on their forehead of thinking, you know the thought the line of thought and his head is highly doomed it, it means to say that students you know uh, his head is a round shape you know uska pura goal hai head it's, when it is when the poet is telling you his head is highly doomed it means his head is rounded his head is rounded in the shape and his coat is dusty from neglect it means to say that nobody cares for him he is not a pet cat so, because of the negligence of the people, his coat is dusty. Coat has been referred here. Coat is referring the body of the makeabiti because a cat's body is generally full of furs. You know, the cat's body is furry body. 
so his furs um, you know um, are not very uh, clean it's dusty bahut sara usme dhool laga hua hai because of the neglect the people neglect him nobody cares for him nobody looks after for him so his coat coat means his body the fur on his body uh, you know animal has generally fur on the body that is why we can refer their body as the coat also because coat has the furs so the coat of the mekabeti is quite you know dirty and dusty because of the negligence of the people nobody cares for him nobody looks after for him so actually his body is quite dusty his whiskers are uncombed whiskers here student you know the mustaches you know the side uh, ones of uh, of you you is known as the thick side ones is actually known as whiskers you know this mustache and you know the beard of animals you can refer them as whiskers so his whiskers are actually uncombed it means to say that you know it's not clean and tidy you know in in human world when your hair is properly tied and clean it means it is combed in animal world you know you can use this human world for animals also when they are dirty when this is not properly you know uh, um, arranged so you can say that his whiskers are uncombed and he actually moves his body from side to side the word so is means student you know when you move um, something side to side so he actually shows his head from side to side uh, and uh, with a movements like a snake like a snake he move his body uh, side to side and when you think he is half asleep he is always wide awake and whenever you think that Mekabit is sleeping. Actually, Mekabit is not sleeping. He is wide awake. Wide awake means he is fully awake. And you know, whenever you think that he is half asleep, you are the mind me. But actually, at that time, he was fully awake. And that's what the poet is telling you about Mekabit.